So, uh, welcome. Uh, can you please uh, tell me your, your name? Um, um, I'm Martin Rivera from Honduras, and I am the uh, Knowledge and Information Coordinator for the Water and Sanitation Network in Honduras, yeah. RASOM. And that network is part of the Central America Water and Sanitation Network, too. Um, I'm representing now the, the Resource Center. Yeah. And the Resource Center is a group of people working in terms of promoting information and knowledge management yeah. and the water and sanitation sector. Okay. So, uh, in terms of promoting information knowledge management, can you give me a practical example of, of, of how you're doing it? I mean, is it just handing out publications? Are you using websites? I mean, maybe what is an example that you could well, share? For, with us. Yeah, yeah, we had like a different ways to deliver the information to the people and uh, at the different level, at the community level, at the regional level and at the national level. And, and we use like uh, training for facilitators or, or, or trainers and, and um, um, that means water and sanitation technicians or promoters or health promoters or, or journalists in some cases, depending on the group. Um, and we work with using different uh, topics. We have so thematic working groups. So we have the transparency working group, we have the sanitation working group, yeah. the water quality working group, the communication working group, that different type of groups. But so, so what do you expect to get out of Stockholm then, which can support these kind of trainings that you're doing? Uh, well, now in, in Honduras, yeah, or it's, in it's, Central America. it's part yeah. of the connection what the other people are doing, but at yeah. the same time is to get some ideas or share experiences and ideas. That's part yeah. of the uh, resource man uh, resource center activities to share experiences and ideas, yeah. and at the end to learn from that. Yeah. Because if you share and you get information, we expect it like uh, you can use it, yeah. and. And that's part of the idea, like to have a better connectivity to the people, and to uh, realize what's the demand of the information like that they need, because in some of the cases we provide information, but maybe it's not the information like that they need, or we don't use the right way to send and communicate the information to them. Yeah. So the connectivity and the way like uh, you provide information is really important in order yeah. to be sure, like. Uh, they will get the right information and they can use it later and they can learn from that. So how, how are you finding out whether it's the right information or how are you addressing, let's say, some of the challenges you have, whether it's, it's a, a barrier in terms of like, is this the right content or not, or a barrier in terms of, you know, is this, uh, is this particular channel working? You know, is there connectivity? Yeah. Wow, that, well, with that, we have like a different challenges. For example, connectivity in terms of the website. Yeah. And rural community is really hard. If they have connectivity at some level, the connectivity is really slow. And they don't have all the tools of uh, all those softwares and yeah. interns to get that type of information. And they're probably not patient enough to, 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 uh, you know, spend an entire week learning how to use your site. Probably. <laughs> well, and the other yeah. thing is the cost. Yeah. Because connectivity in, in rural communities or in small communities in my country is expensive. How, so how, you pay how much per more hour. Uh, you pay um, uh, per hour. It could be uh, it depends um, two or two dollars per hour. No? But for our country, two or two dollars in rural communities yeah, yeah. is a lot of money. So yeah. you have to make the decision. Do I need to go to, to the web, to the computer and get some information or I can use that for food or I can use that for transportation or for recreation? Yeah. So that's something hard yeah. because you need to make the decision if going and get information or, or get more education is more important than yeah. uh, food or transportation so, or other stuff. So how are you bridging the gap in communities where uh, what's missing is some basic services like water and sanitation, and 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 then are people. It seems to me like maybe people would be willing to pay for connectivity before they would be willing to pay for water and sanitation. <laughs> so, would your strategy be, you know? <laughs> well, that, that's hard because you need to to discuss with the communities and see the priorities because the yeah. community are in some ways different. Depends on the local culture. Depends on the activities. Okay. 
and youth is more in proud to yeah. go to the computers and do yeah. something but the rest of the population not okay uh, so there's hope uh, 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 for uh, water and uh, when you say water and sanitation or technology in some cases it's what's basic for them yeah with the basic needs and in some cases it's water yeah, yeah. or food yeah. And later on, the others, recreation, yeah. well, technology. I'm just thinking about the urban areas around the world where you see open sewers and children with cell phones. Um, <laughs> and and so, so whether it's, whether it's not a, a website or a cell phone, I mean, a, a, a computer or a cell phone, there's a <laughs> well, an I interesting guess the, question. This is part of the success of the marketing. Because I guess uh, marketing, like uh, the computer, marketing, yeah. cell cellular phones, something like yeah. that, is, is, is really good. And turns like uh, to convince that people like uh, having a cellular phone is more important to pay but, the but, water services. But wouldn't, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you say that a cellular phone is also something very accessible? Because even if you're illiterate, you know, you can use a cellular phone, but you, yeah. can't, use, uh, you can't use a computer. And... and if, if, if you have a cellular phone, you can also get a job, which then can provide you water and, and, and sanitation afterwards. So, I mean, this is the argument I hear yeah, from people yeah. is, is that actually maybe the cellular phone is, has, there's something basic about this level of communication that people are willing to have that before they have... Uh, yeah, right. You're right. But at the same time, I guess, and at some level, there is a cultural thing behind that. And in my case, I guess in our culture is like a, uh, for some people is more related with status. Like uh, if you have a cellular phone and you feel like uh, you have a different status, even though like uh, you are a, a poor, you are yeah. part of the poor yeah. population, you feel like uh, I'm, I'm feeling better. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm getting some status, have, getting a, a cellular phone. Mm. But at the end, it's not. Because they continue not having water, they continue having like a, all the yeah. problems with the, okay. with the rest of the population. Uh, so, yeah, I guess like a, it's, it's more related with the new generation to get communicated, yeah. Yeah, you know. But um, it's a good discussion, like okay. uh, how, how well, they make the decisions yeah. and let's why they are choosing having a cellular phone instead to pay the water services or something yeah. like that. It's the same, like uh, we compare that. You are willing to pay the, the uh, like uh, to buy two Coca-Colas instead to yeah. pay the water tariff. Maybe yeah. two Coca-Colas are more expensive than the whole month of the water service. Why? Why they are choosing like uh, yeah. to buy two Coca-Colas instead to pay well, the monthly fee. Okay, let's discuss this uh, <laughs> later this week and then <laughs> we'll come back to it. Okay. Thank you a lot, uh, Martin, and uh, yeah, enjoy the week. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, bye.